Warning, viewer discretion is advised. The following video contains content that may be triggering or upsetting to some viewers. As long as good and evil have existed, the nation and the world have witnessed ongoing unsettling events. The headlines have been dominated by stories of unexpected and tragic stabbings, sexual assault, shootings, terrorism, and plain disregard for human life. The situation warrants that we must all do our best to get ready and stay ready to act in accordance with the threat at hand. That's easier said than done, right? Some threats are more manageable than others, but any threat is capable of causing irreversible harm. Welcome back to Analytical Chefs. I'm your host Sergio, and we have another great episode for you today. Sometimes fleeing danger with your loved ones and not engaging the hostile threat may be your best bet. Sometimes hiding and waiting for the threat to subside is the appropriate response. Sometimes standing your ground and fighting with everything you've got is your only option to make a difference between life and death. For this, you must train yourself to be mentally prepared to do so. Today we will be analyzing several crimes where we will be deciding if the victim could have defused the situation, responded differently to the threat, or been able to refrain from engagement altogether. Let's begin with bullying. This includes actions such as making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone physically or verbally, and excluding someone from a group on purpose. Bullying can happen both in person and online. Our first story involves two 13-year-old girls. For nearly a year and a half, 13-year-old Eliciana Valdez had been the victim of bullying on social media by another 13-year-old girl. Aliciana would tell her mother, she called me ugly, fat, and F my dead grandma. Her mother would tell her daughter to ignore it. She remembers specifically saying, you're going to have haters. She's jealous. Just block her and create a new account. Aliciana did, but says the girl would find her online and continue to torment. Nothing prepared her for what was to come on April 26, 2021. The family had gone to Center Park in Inglewood for an afternoon of fun, when all of a sudden the girl who had been bullying Eliciana was right in front of her and ready for a fight. You can see Eliciana getting stabbed three times and slashed once on her left arm. The knife punctured her liver, kidneys, diaphragm, and pericardial sac. Doctors had to immediately operate Eliciana, who thought she was losing her life. The suspect was arrested charged with one misdemeanor count of assault with a deadly weapon and one count of electronic harassment against a minor. However, the suspect only received probation as the 13-year-old minor had no criminal record. What do we know? The attack was a result of an ongoing cause of bullying. The attack appeared to be premeditated and the attacker only received probation. To top things off, the attacker made a statement that she was not done with her daughter. The attacker's lack of remorse is sickening. Defending against a knife attack is a serious and dangerous situation. Here are some strategies and tips to be mindful of that may help you. Maintain distance. The primary principle is to keep as much distance as possible between you and the attacker. The further you are, the safer you are from the knife. Assess your attacker. Try to determine if the attacker is right or left-handed. This can give you an idea of which side of the attack the knife will come from. For example, most people are right-handed, so if the knife is in the attacker's right hand, it's likely their dominant hand. This means they might use the knife with more strength, precision, and confidence. Attacks might predominantly come from your left side, which is the attacker's right side. Being aware of this can help in positioning yourself defensively. The attacker might employ various strikes, such as slashing, stabbing, or thrusting motions, using the knife's edge or point. The attacker's left hand, which is the non-dominant, might be used to grab, push, or distract you, making it easier for them to use the knife with their right hand. If you can determine the attacker's dominant hand, it can help you in anticipating their moves. Positioning yourself to the attacker's non-dominant side might give you a slight advantage though it's crucial to maintain distance and prioritize safety. Learn self-defense techniques. Some martial arts and self-defense systems like Krav Maga 
and Sistema offer techniques specifically designed to defend against knife attacks. So remember, stay calm. Panicking can lead to mistakes. Knives can easily cause severe injuries. If there's an opportunity to escape safely, take it. Your primary goal should be to get away from the threat. Call for help. It's essential to remember that every situation is unique and there's no guaranteed method of defense. The best defense is to avoid dangerous situations altogether and to be aware of your surroundings. What do you do if you're being bullied? Stay calm. It's crucial not to react aggressively or show fear. By staying calm, you can think more clearly and make safer decisions. Avoid isolation. Whenever possible, you should stay with a group of friends or classmates. There's safety in numbers. Report the threat. Always tell a trusted adult about any threats or bullying incidents. This could be a parent, teacher, school counselor, or principal. Document everything. This can be useful evidence if the situation escalates. Stay away from the bully. If possible, avoid places where the bully hangs out and take different routes to class or home. Seek support. Talk to friends, family, or a counselor about the bullying. They can offer emotional support and advice. Learn self-defense. While physical retaliation is not recommended, knowing self-defense techniques can boost confidence and may be useful in extreme situations. Seeking professional help, therapy, can help victims challenge unhelpful thoughts and develop healthier responses to stress. Remember, it's essential you know that you are not alone and that the bullying is not your fault. Seeking help and support is crucial. Bullying is a complex behavior that can be influenced by a variety of factors. Some common characteristics associated with people who may be more likely to engage in bullying behavior include perceived power imbalance. Bullying often involves a real or perceived power imbalance where the bully feels they have some sort of dominance over their victim. It may be physical strength, social status, or other factors. Social intolerance and low self-worth. Individuals who exhibit bullying behavior may have an underlying issue related to social intolerance or low self-esteem. They might bully others to feel better about themselves or to fit into a particular social group. Lack of empathy. Bullies often lack the ability to empathize with others, making it easier for them to inflict harm without feeling remorse. Some individuals bully others to exert control and establish dominance in social settings. Exposure to aggressive behavior. Those exposed to aggressive behavior at home or in their communities might be more likely to replicate this type of behavior in other settings. Peer pressure. In some cases, People might engage in bullying due to the pressure from their peers or to gain social acceptance. Run away from the threat if possible. If you're unable to run away from the threat, then you gotta do everything in your power to fight for your life. The next story involves the chilling and recent tragic murder of Ryan Carson. Ryan Carson, 31-year-old, well-known political organizer and policy analyst with his girlfriend, Claudia Morales, they were both returning from a wedding in Brooklyn. On Monday morning, approximately two weeks ago, the couple was sitting at the bus stop on Malcolm X Boulevard at 3.50 a.m. The couple was minding their own business when they crossed paths with an 18-year-old suspect identified as Brian Doling. At first, the video shows Brian passed the couple as they sat and talked at the bus stop. It did not appear that Brian initially targeted the couple. However, the video shows Brian appearing to kick park scooters when Ryan and Claudia walked in his direction. Brian yelled to Ryan, what the F are you looking at? And I'll kill you. Brian approached Ryan aggressively. Brian tripped over the same bench he was sitting at. Brian stabbed him three times, piercing Ryan's heart, causing his death. Brian still appeared aggressive as Claudia was standing there and Brian even spat in her face. Despite all of this, Brian's lawyer stated that he's a good kid who wasn't looking for trouble despite the gruesome stabbing caught on video. Two months prior to this violent crime, the suspect's aunt called 911 and described Brian as emotionally disturbed after he broke his girlfriend's belongings during an argument. This is definitely a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's sad that we have unstable people on the streets. How could have Ryan possibly survived this? 
It's very challenging to pinpoint exact measures that would have guaranteed Ryan's survival in such a sudden and violent encounter. However, we must do what we can to learn from this tragic scenario. General safety precautions such as being aware of one's surroundings, avoiding isolated areas, especially during late hours, traveling in groups, and having a means of communication or safety alert system in place can be beneficial. Once again, self-defense training will equip individuals with techniques to fend off any attack, which can be invaluable in these situations. It's essential to note that every situation is unique, and even though you may take these precautions, there's no surefire way to predict or prevent all danger. Maintaining self-control can also save your life. Everyone has free will, and although we would love for everyone to use their free will for good, that's just not the case. How is it possible to defuse a hostile situation? Stay calm. Maintain your own composure. Reacting with anger or aggression can escalate the situation. Take deep breaths and ensure your voice remains calm and steady. Active listening. Instead of immediately offering solutions or advice, give the hostile individual space to express their feelings. Let them vent their anger or frustrations. By actively listening, you show empathy and understanding, which can help de-escalate the situation. Set boundaries. Clearly and assertively, communicate your boundaries. Avoid overreacting. It's essential to avoid behaviors that might provoke further aggression, such as speaking loudly, standing too close, or making sudden movements. Instead, speak quietly and calmly, while also maintaining a safe distance. Seek support. If possible, have someone else notify security or authorities. Having additional people around can deter the attacker and provide additional support if the situation escalates. Emotional intelligence. Utilize emotional intelligence skills to understand and manage your emotions. Empathize with your attacker and diffuse conflict. Recognizing nonverbal cues and understanding the emotional state of the attacker can benefit you and your loved ones in navigating the situation. Avoidance coping. In some situations, the best course of action might be to remove yourself from the hostile environment, especially if there is an immediate threat to your safety. This aligns with the flight response, which is a natural reaction to danger. Brooklyn has experienced a noticeable increase in stabbings over the past year. The reasons behind the surge are multifaceted and complex. Some include economic hardships, Economic challenges can lead to increased tensions and conflicts within communities, which may result in violent incidences. Mental health issues. Untreated mental health conditions can contribute to violent behaviors. Gang activities. Disputes over territory, personal vendettas, and gang-related activities have been identified as factors in some of the stabbings. Drug use. While drug use can be a factor in some violent incidences, it is not identified as the primary cause of the rise in stabbings. Many factors include a person's mental health, environment, and personal circumstances. These things all play a role in their actions while under the influence of any drug or alcohol. Do not gamble your future away because you are thinking to disconnect from your daily stress. Face it and overcome it. Do not end up in hell. Stay prepared to defend yourself and your family from any threat necessary. Work on your emotional intelligence in order to have the right state of mind in the worst circumstances. Seek self-defense training, gun and tactical training. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I deeply appreciate your time and hope the content shared on True Crime has been both insightful and educational. If you have gained any value from this content, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking the video so the message may be presented to other viewers as well. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next episode.